Hey, this is Pete with Chronic Racing. Today we're going to walk through assembly of the SSR SR125. Grab yourself a razor blade and let's get that box off. And there you go, the SSR SR125 in its protective cage. To get it out of the cage, we're going to grab a Phillips screwdriver and a 10 millimeter wrench. We're going to remove the 10 screws at the bottom of the cage. However, if you've got yourself an electric drill driver, you're going to save a ton of time. Next, we're going to remove the hardware box. This box will contain your owner's manual, your certificate of origin for registration, attaching hardware, your handlebar risers, fuel cap, and zip tie for the kill switch wire. Next, we'll grab a pair of wire cutters and start getting this bike out of the cage. Go ahead and cut the zip ties, retaining wires that hold the front wheel in. We'll set that aside. Next, we're going to clip the wires that hold the forks in. Rear axle retaining wires. We'll remove the front fender and the shock retaining zip tie. Now we'll cruise around the bike, cutting the zip ties that hold the foot pegs and hold the handlebars in place for shipping. With the top of the cage out of the way, the next step, we're going to remove the front number plate. That'll give us access to mount the handlebars and route the cables. Swing the handlebars up. We're going to assemble the risers. Drop the whole assembly into the upper triple tree. And then we'll install the four lock nuts supplied in the hardware bag. We like to hand thread these just to ensure that we don't have a cross threading issue. Next, we're going to grab a 6mm Allen on an extension and a 12mm box wrench. We'll go ahead and position the handlebars and tighten them up. Next we'll remove the bubble wrap that protects the grips and levers during shipping and we'll remove the rubber wedge in the front brake lever. This holds pressure on the caliper retaining a spacer and we'll get to that later. Next we're going to remove the retaining bolt for the shipping strut.
we will discard this nut and replace it with a supplied lock nut once the shock is installed. Next step, we'll lift the rear end. We're going to remove the shipping strut and we'll discard that. Drop the shock down into the swing arm, reinstall the bolt, and using that supplied lock nut, we're going to go ahead and fasten the rear shock. The 13 and 14 millimeter wrench will get this done for you. Next we'll grab a 17 and a 14 millimeter wrench. We're going to loosen the front axle, remove the axle so we can get the bike out of the cage. Notice the long spacer on the disc side. When we install the wheel, the long spacer will remain on the disc side. Now if you have a stand, it'll make the next few operations a lot easier. A five gallon bucket or a milk crate will work just fine as well. Grabbing an 8mm socket, we're going to remove the bolts from the lower triple tree that will hold the fender in place. We'll use the two shorter bolts at the rear of the fender to get things started. Then we'll place the number plate face down and insert the long bolt through the front part of the fender and then swing the number plate up and reattach it to the upper triple tree. Next, we're going to slide the brake line into the keeper and we'll tighten that up with a Phillips screwdriver and an 8mm box wrench. Now we can come in and just do the final tightening on the fender, making sure it's aligned before we crank it down. On some models, the kill switch is not connected during shipping, so we want to make sure to connect that so we don't have any issues on startup. Now we'll remove the spacer between the front brake pads and discard that. We're going to go ahead and install the front wheel long spacer on the disc side. So we're going to insert the wheel, sliding the disc up between the brake pads. We'll install the spacer and push the axle through and we'll install the shorter spacer on the opposite side and then install the lock nut. Again starting it by hand to avoid cross threading. We do not recommend Loctite on this because it can cause thread stripping when it's time to change a tube or tire. Just bring it in snug, it is a lock nut, it will not come loose. And as with any dirt bike, you'll want to check your nuts and bolts every ride. We're getting close now. We're going to remove the protective plastic on the heat shield. And just simply grab it and peel it right off. Now we'll run around the bike removing the protective paper from the graphics.
and we'll remove the plastic that protects the seat. Next, remove the sticker that protects the fuel tank. Install the fuel cap and the vent tube. This bike will hold 0.8 of a gallon and we prefer to use premium pump gas. Lastly, before operation, we like to change the shipping oil, get that out of there and replace it with fresh US grade oil, uh, 1030 or 1040 conventional will do just fine no synthetics. We'll remove the drain bolt with a 17 millimeter wrench. Once the oil has drained, we'll go ahead and reinstall the drain bolt. Again, we're going to start that by hand to avoid cross threading. Then we'll go ahead and tighten it up. Snug and a quarter turn gets it done. You want to be careful not to over tighten, you could damage the case. Next, we're going to fill the engine oil directly through the case. This particular model will hold one quart exactly. This is your full mark on the dipstick. To check your oil level, insert the stick without screwing it in, pull it back out and then check. If the level is low, top off, otherwise you're done. And here you have it, the SSR SR125 Pit Bike. Catch you guys on the next one.